In this video, I'm going to show you how you determine orders from experimental data. So remember in the video where I showed you how to write a rate law, I said that the order are these exponents to which the reactant concentrations are raised. So x here would be the order of the reaction in A. So if x were to be 3, we would say that this reaction is third order in A. But to actually determine the order, or in order to get this x, we have to run some experiments. So let me walk you through what experiments you have to run through. So to find the order of a given reactant, in this case it's A, what you do is you change the concentration of that reactant, and again in this case it's A, and we see what effect that has on the overall rate of the reaction. So in this first trial, I set the initial concentration of A to be 1 molar, and that produced an overall reaction rate of 1 molar per second. Then I doubled the concentration of A to begin with to 2 molar and that produced an overall rate of the reaction of again 1 molar per second. Finally I tripled the concentration of A at the beginning from 1 to 3 and still the overall rate of the reaction was 1 molar per second. So we can see here that the concentration of A really doesn't have any effect on the overall rate of the reaction. So in this case we would say that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of A to the zero power because A doesn't actually affect the rate. Anything to the zero power is just one. So A is actually excluded from the rate law in this case. Okay, in this case, you can see I've done the same thing. I set the initial concentration of the reactant A at 1, 2, and 3 molar. And I saw how that affected the overall rate of the reaction. In this case, when we doubled the initial concentration of A, we doubled the overall rate of the reaction, right? It went from 1 molar per second to 2 molar per second. And when we tripled the initial concentration of A from 1 to 3 molar, we tripled the overall rate of the reaction, right? It went from 1 molar per second to 3 molar per second. So in this case, we can say that the overall rate of the reaction is actually first order in A. Because we know that if we double A, we double the rate. If we triple A, we triple the rate. And that's what's reflected in the math here. When we put this to the first power, usually you don't even write that. You just write rate equals K times A, and you, don't, you just assume that there's an invisible one up here. And we know that if we double this, we double this. If we triple this, we triple this. So this is what the data looks like for a reaction that is first order in A. Okay, now look at what happened to the data. So I started out with initial concentrations of A at 1, 2, and 3 molar. This time, still at an initial concentration of 1 molar for A, I produced an overall rate of the reaction of 1 molar per second. But look at what happened now when I doubled the initial concentration of A to 2 molar. I actually multiplied the overall rate of the reaction by 4, right? Now it's 4 molar per second. And when I triple the initial concentration of A to 3 molar, Look at what happened to the overall rate of the reaction. It increased by a factor of 9. Now it's 9 molar per second. So if you look carefully here, you'll see that the math works out such that A is actually raised to the second power, or the order is 2 in A. Because if I double A, I multiply the rate by 4. If I triple A, I multiply the rate by 9, and that's because of this square here. Okay, let's use what we just learned to solve a problem. So I've got a reaction written up here, and I want you to find the order of this reaction with respect to NO and H2. So you can see those are our two reactants here, and I've got an entire table of data that we'll have to use to solve this problem. Because remember, to find the order of these reactants, in other words, this X and this Y, you have to use an experiment. So in this first column, I have the initial concentrations of NO. In this column, I have the initial concentrations of H2. And in this column, I have the rate of the reaction, the overall rate of the reaction. And another way to say that is the change in concentration of N2 per change in time. Or essentially, how fast are we making this product? That's a measure of the overall rate of the reaction. And of course, it is in units molarity per second, or molarity times seconds to the negative one. So you can see here, each row corresponds with a different trial. So in trial one, the initial concentration of NO was 0.5 molar, the initial concentration of H2 was 0.75 molar, and the overall rate of the reaction that resulted was 0.169 molarity per second. So in order to find the order of the reaction with respect to NO and H2, I have to find 
two trials to compare where I changed the initial concentration and to see how that changed the overall rate of the reaction. Okay, so let's find the order with respect to NO. So in order to find this, we need to see how the concentration initially of NO changed the overall rate of the reaction. So we need to pick two trials where the concentration of NO changed. And in order to just look at NO, we want those two trials to be two trials where the concentration of H2 did not change. So you can see that the first two trials are perfect for this. NO's concentration changed, but H2's concentration was held constant. So I did the math down here. I want to see what happened to the overall rate of the reaction when NO's concentration went from 0.25 to 0.5. In other words, when we double the initial concentration of NO from 0.25 to 0.5, what happens to the overall rate of the reaction? So when the initial concentration of NO is 0.25, the overall rate of the reaction was 0.04225 molarity per second. But when we double the initial concentration of NO to 0.5 molar, the overall rate of the reaction increases to 0.169 molarity per second. So when we double or increase the initial concentration of NO, the initial rate of the reaction goes up by four times. So that means the order of this reaction with respect to NO is two. Okay, now let's find the order of the reaction with respect to H2. So again, we want to pick two trials where the concentration of H2 changes, but the concentration of NO stays the same so that we can just look at H2. So if you notice here, trials two and three are perfect for this. The concentration of H2 changed, but the concentration of NO did not. So if you notice here, from trials two to three, we doubled the concentration of H2. And also, the overall rate of the reaction seemed to change as well. So I did the math down here. We went from 0.75 molar to 1.5 molar for the initial concentration of H2. And this is what happened to the initial rate of the reaction. It went from 0.04225 molarity per second to 0.0845 molarity per second. So when we doubled the initial concentration of H2, we doubled the overall rate of the reaction, right? So that means that the order of the reaction with respect to H2 is first order, it's one. So now we can say that the order of the reaction with respect to NO is two, and the order of the reaction with respect to H2 is one. We can also say that the overall order of the reaction is two plus one, or three. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up.